Alright, we rolling. Shalom. I'd like to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakat Badash. And, uh, yeah, let's go right into it. Got anything you want to read, bring out? This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. It says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of Yahweh, and the altar, and them that worship therein. And what? The temple of Yahweh, right? So this is speaking about the Israelites, all right? There's that separation, okay? You got the other nations, and you have the Most High's anointed, the Most High's chosen. Keep going. It says, but the court, which is without the temple, leave out. The court that's without the temple, leave out. We're speaking about the Gentile nations, the people that aren't of this sign that, that you see right here. It says, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. And when you go back to Revelation 11 and 1 it says and there was given me a reed like unto a rod and that's that's the holy bible that's these scriptures and then when you jump down back to 2 it says but the court which is without temple leave out and measure it not the bible and the holy bible these scriptures it's like a measuring stick you know that's how you measure the people you know what i'm saying like you measure them by their works like next like you ask them questions according to the Bible, and you measure the, the, depending on their answers. That's how you measure them by. It's Psalms twenty-three and four. This is Psalms chapter twenty-three, verse four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So the valley of the shadow of death is America. This is a low place. Morally, spiritually, you can go on and on. It's a myriad of reasons. Spiritual degradation, as far as the eye can see. It says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Right, so thy rod and thy staff comforts us. Alright? Which you alluded to earlier that the rod and the staff is the scriptures. So that's really what comforts us these days. Right. You know, we're not out here in these streets, you know, trying to raise up violence and trying to take down Esau by ourselves. Right. What we're doing is prophesizing. You come out on the highways and the byways, put up videos. And all we do is go into the scriptures. You know, we're not coming with gimmicks, nothing of that sort. Right. We're homeless. Yeah. So everything we do is spiritual. We're spiritual. It says, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So that's a psalm that King David wrote, right? Obviously, you know the history of King David. You know, he, he aged and he died, right? But the scriptures, on the flip side, the scriptures say that reincarnation um, is, in, is, is in the scriptures, right? So King David, he's going to come back on the throne again, man. The scriptures say that he's going to raise up a tabernacle of David. Can we get that scripture? going to raise up the tabernacle of David. So if you're going to raise up the tabernacle of David, wouldn't it make sense that you would have the man himself? Because the spirit is eternal. The spirit doesn't die. It comes back in a different body. Okay. Okay. 
Amos chapter 9 and 11. In that day will I write, raise up the tabernacle of David. In that day. Letting you know that it's a future connotation. It says that it that is fallen and closed up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. As in the days of old, man. And we fell as a people. You know what I'm saying? All 12 tribes. that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name saith the Lord that doeth this behold the days come saith the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed and the mountain shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt so the plowman shall overtake the reaper alright so right now you can say that we're the plowmen, right? I mean, we're the ones who get up every day. And we have to live in this hellhole of the kingdom, right? And we have this man Esau over us, the Edomites. So there's going to be a changing of power. It's going to be a shift. And that's, and that's the importance of the kingdom of heaven. Because we can't go, we can't go on in this world forever with, with, it, with it going the way that it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? As in, I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. Right, he's gonna uplift it, he's gonna get rid of it. So then they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Yeah, because we're gonna be plentiful, we're gonna be a prosperous people. Right now, we can't, we cannot really say that we're prospering as a people. I'm saying, you see what they did, what that dude did to that Jake on the train. Oh yeah, he chopped. Remember the chokehold? Yeah, in New York City. Yeah. You seen how that happened? So that let that that kind of lets you know that you, you you really in the belly of the beast. So that I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord thy power. And you notice how long it took them to indict him? People was over there protesting in the subways, trying to trying to get the DA to, uh, to, to come up with charges. And eventually they got him, but it took him long enough. That shit should have been open and shut. Yeah, it's a slam dunk. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. Right. How do you get involved in, into a situation like that? And it leads to a man's death. That's excessive. So that kind of reminds me of that scripture in Genesis where it says that Judah's hands shall be in the thick of his enemies. Right now, you could say that our next is in the hands of our enemies. Sadly, you know what I'm saying? We over here getting choked out. Whether it's financially, spiritually, emotionally. And ultimately, we're not going to be, we're not going to receive the kingdom of heaven until Babylon falls. That's really like, that's really what we're waiting on. For Yahweh Shah to come back and just rescue us. And, but before that, you know, you have prophecies that are set in place that got to right. come to pass. And that's what we're looking out for. Um, scriptures say to watch as well as pray. You want to get that scripture real quick? That's also part of this truth, just being patient. It's enduring. This is Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. It says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah, so we watch every day look for signs and we, we look and see what's going on in the news and then we try to measure it with the scriptures you know to help us get the understanding of the time period that we're living right now we know that the mo 
CB is right around the corner, it's on his way, you know? So we don't gotta wait too much longer. And once that happens, that's when everything's gonna start moving quick, it's gonna escalate. Because imagine if like 10, 20 years goes by, and this man is in the fullness of his efficiency, you know, he's rolled out his, his agenda, his NWO, he's got everybody under his thumb to the max. Could you imagine that? Nah. The scriptures say, except for those days shall be shortened, and then, then shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So the most high he's going to remember is his people, man. His elect. He's not going to let his elect go out, go out like that. He just, you know, just languish in his kingdom. I got something. This is Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh hath remembered her iniquities. So all the wickedness that goes on in this place, the Lord sees it. It says, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works in the cup which she had filled filled to her double so all the wickedness that goes on in here like you just said like how the man choked out the other man on the train even take it back all the way to slavery all the things that Esau Edom and these other nations done to us in the kingdom they're going to receive double and that's called balance it says how much she hath glorified herself and live deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord thy power who judges her. And that's talking about, you know, the ICBM missile, the nuclear missiles coming to destroy Babylon. America. That's it. That's it. In Jeremiah 49 and 12. This is Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have surely drunk it. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Right, so, most High punished his own people. What do you think he's going to do to our enemies that trespass against us? Because, like I just said, we are his people, right? We are the chosen. So, as much hell as we went to, like I said, what do you think is going to happen to our enemies? Because we're not going to be in this position forever. Says thou shall not go unpunished but thou shalt surely drink of it for I have sworn by myself saith the Lord that Basra shall become a desolation a reproach a waste and a curse and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste Basra Basra is an ancient city of Eden right so it's Esau man Esau is going to be you have a lot to pay for. You got a lot that's coming soon. You're going to have to drink that, that, that cup of judgment just like we had to. And there's no way around it. All right. It says, I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together and come against her, and rise up to the battle. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, and despised among men. Thy terrible, terribleness, terribleness hath deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart. O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the high of the hill, thou though shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle. Right, this is speaking about Esau. Because when you go into like the ancient history, Esau's land was Mount Seir. Right. And then you 
can even look at the archaeology of today with Mount Seir and uh, Mount Petra, you know what I'm saying? They was literally living up in the rocks, in the mountains. So they are they, they are the original cave people. It says, I will bring thee down from tents, saith the Lord. Also Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by, it shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. As, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord. No man shall abide there, neither shall son of man dwell in it. Read that again. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, we know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. Right. So basically, this place is going to be wiped out. All right. Another cold word. Another cold word for this place is the land of Edom. All right. It says, behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong, but I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me and who will appoint me the time? And who is the shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purpose that he hath proposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make the habitation desolate with them. Right, so the least of the flock shall draw them out. Which we believe that that's speaking about you know, the people over there in the land today, the small heads, and then the mentioned Temanites, which are known as the, uh, the most smartest Edomites on earth. Because um, them Germans, man, they're, they're, they're renowned for their technology and their advancements in technology. And um, if I'm not mistaken, they wouldn't even have even um, came up with the technology to uh, make these, these ICBM missiles today, right? Because right. they had these nuclear scientists and whatnot. Yeah, I forgot. The, I forgot what it was called, but the apostles bring it out like half, after, I believe, over the World War II, how the... Um, America, they went and got some of those German scientists to, you know, help them come up with like, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Inventions. The atom bomb? Yes, the, all, all kinds of stuff. And they, and they say that the, um, the Germans, they, they, um, they're known for, their, for their, um, the weapon creations. For example, you got the AK-47. They said that the AK-47 is very reliable. You can pick, bring it underwater, it won't jam on you, you know what I'm saying? It may not be the most accurate, you know? I mean, really, I'm not even so sure, I'm not even gonna it. Operation Paperclip, that's what it's called. What is that? Bring it out. What is that? So it's Operation Paperclip was a secret United States intelligence program in which more than 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians were taken from the former Nazi Germany to the United States for government employment after the end of World War II in Europe between 1945 and 1959. Okay. So that's the history. Yeah. Because the Germans, they make the best of everything. They make the best cars, like BMWs, Mercedes. Like even the, the logo for the BMW, it came from like A German plane. helicopters. Plane helicopters. Yeah. Wait, so what's the first man to make um, uh, a plane? Was it the, the Wright Brothers? Wright Brothers, yeah. yeah. So that's Esau for you, man. He was brought up high. He did because he has all this technology, all this power that's at his hand. He thinks he's a god and that he can't be touched. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, I'm not sure how Shabbat Rafa. 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 Yeah, I'm not sure how
remember you. Yeah. I just remember both of you. Jeremiah 49 and 19 it says, Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me and who will appoint me that time? And who is the shepherd that will stand before me? So you could say that that shepherd is Yahweh. Remember the, uh, that scripture where it says, Smite the shepherd? And um, the rest of the flock shall scatter. So Yahweh Shai was that shepherd. All right? He's the ultimate shepherd, really, when you come to think of it. It says, Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom, and his purposes that he hath proposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty man of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is, con Hamath is confounded and Arapad, for they had, for they have heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea; it cannot be quiet. So that's it on that. You don't got You got anything else? Because we love going into prophecy, man. Right. right. We really can't help it, bro. I mean, what else we got to talk about? You know, we're living in a time when these prophecies, the last few prophecies are getting ready to come to pass. Go to Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah 51 and 6. I should start at 5. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his, of his power, of the Lord of hosts, through their land was, though the, Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel, flee out the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon. You can speak in that. Yes, yeah, talking about the coming destruction of Babylon. Like, you know, come out of her. It says, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken, and the nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. So that, that represents their philosophies, because we have the nations around the, the earth that have been influenced by America, you know, from a government standpoint, you know, with democracy, um, you know, two-party system. Even the mindset, just be all you can be here. Like, if you're clinging on to this Babylon and the time's coming to pass, you just don't get destroyed. Like, there's, there's no two ways about it. Yeah. And they even adopt the same principles morally. You know what I'm saying? All this folly that goes on here, like, like what's it called? Tomorrow is Mother's Day. Where's that in the scriptures? That's idolatry. 
but the people, the average person, they don't look at it like that. They see this as a day to give your mother praise, which is going off. You could have somebody that's living in America, that struggles in America, and then they might have a family member that lives in a different country. And they'll be like, oh, happy Mother's Day. Oh, let me do they'll think about doing something for their mother that day. Right. Because they're living in this land. You know what I'm saying? And they're just going by what the society norms are. Right. Going north. Where in the where in the scriptures does it say to praise your mother? Like you, you honor your mother as being your mother. But you ain't supposed to be giving her all this glory and praise. That's idolatry. I mean, yeah, the scriptures say to honor thy mother and thy father. And honor the, yeah, honor thy father and thy mother. Yeah, yeah. And you do just that, you know what I'm saying? But not bringing any shame upon them, you know? You got people out there that live in reckless lifestyles, getting locked up, put up in jail. You right. know what I'm saying? You, got, out. you got daughters out there. That are being promiscuous, jumping around from man to man. What does that do? That brings shame to your to your parents, to your family. Your father, especially. Why do you think they don't even be having that shit in the Middle East? Right. You go over there to one of them countries, they ain't gonna be having it. They're gonna be looking down upon you. Yeah, my spin her spin spit in his daughter's face. Banish her. <laughs> Where is I? This is Jeremiah 51 and 7. It says, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen. And yeah, they're, they're mad because they're going to come to find out that it wasn't the truth, you know? It wasn't the truth. All this time, they've been lied to. Exactly. It says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take bomb for her pain. If so, be sh if so, be she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone, into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up into the skies. Lifted up even to the skies. There's going to be a lot of people, a lot of nations. That really rules out from a financial standpoint once this place is wiped out. Because you go into the facts, America is a nation that consumes. It doesn't manufacture or produce really much of anything these days, really. So a lot of nations, they offload their products to this nation and they sell it right. for great profit. So again, once that day of destruction comes, there's going to be no more of that. Not going to be any more free, uh, free, free trade, none of that stuff. These other nations, they're making money hand over fist, working with Babylon, and they, where they're in their country, it may take them ten cents to produce something. They'll come over here in America, sell it for two dollars. Yeah, and then now they're, they're getting greedy and they're trying to take it to another level by dismantling the U.S. dollar, getting rid of it. All right. You know what I'm saying? Which makes sense because look at the way that this system is set up financially the money's not backed by gold so that's a recipe for inflation they keep printing all this money and they're talking about they got to raise the debt system, the debt um deficit right the debt ceiling the debt ceiling yeah what is that Joe? i believe it's joe yeah, they're going to talk about it yeah which usually they do yeah they usually pass it because money is really not real like it's really just a number they that like, come up with out of thin air like, this shit ain't real but if they don't, then that's going to be something new. That lets you know that they're, they're really trying to push forward their agenda if they don't yeah. raise it. Which I hope they don't. Bird, I hope they don't. Let's, Let's get this ball rolling. Let this place fall, man. So, Jeremiah 51 and 10 said, The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our power. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the king of the Medes, for his devices against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. So this is poetic, all right? This is speaking about modern day Babylon. This is not speaking about ancient Babylon. So set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. 
set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O oh, that that O oh, thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasure, thine end is come, and the measures of thy covetousness. Right, that dwellest in the midst of many waters, letting you know that this place is inhabited by people that come from various different nations around the world. And even if you want to come from a geolog geolo uh, geo geo uh, what's the word? geological, yeah, geological standpoint, look at the map of America, it's surrounded by water, right? You know, this side of the world. And so, the western side of the world, for, for a while, it really wasn't um, discovered, it wasn't um, inhabited by people. But you look at it today, now it is. So, the Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely, I will fill thee with men, as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he caused the vapors to ascend from the end, ends of the earth, and he maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. That's it on that. Yeah, that's it. You got something? Nah, you got Start from one. This is Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. It says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power. And right, let me just say this. Revelation chapter 18 is one of my favorite chapters. I remember when I first came into the truth, I was one of the scriptures that I heard. I was just like, wow. You know, you ever just hear a scripture and it just wows yeah, you? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like it just hits close to home. So that was one of them for me. Personally, it's a very clear scripture and uh, chapter to read and understand. You know, it's an easy breakdown. That's how I felt like, you know, when you find out, like, generate, like, reincarnation, it's like, wow, that's heavy. This is Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. It says, And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunken of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So stop right there. This is speaking about the aftermath of the destruction. The scripture that goes hand in hand with that is Isaiah 13 and 20. Get that real quick. Because most of the prophecies in the Old Testament haven't even come to pass yet. I mean, you got to realize that. I mean, you have a lot of uh, so-called scholars that try to break down these, these scriptures and these prophecies. And sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong. They just be way wrong, you know what I'm saying? They don't have the full understanding. That's the spirit. There's Isaiah 13 and 20. It shall never be inhibited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Right, so that lines up in Revelation chapter 18. Because this place is just going to be a desert 
that's inhabited by desert-like creatures, man. It says, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. And owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant places, in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Yeah, the days will not be prolonged. So this kingdom isn't going to go on for, for years down the line. For eternity. Hundreds of years, thousands of years, man. It's really on its last leg. It's right, you can see it. It's right there. Like when I first came into this thing, I knew the kingdom, I didn't have an understanding of the prophecies and all that, but I knew this kingdom would go down, but I never thought it would be in my lifetime. It could very well be in my lifetime. Lord's will, you know, he lets me stand to see it. Yeah, because I mean, if you wanted to, you could put the scriptures aside and look at it from like an analytical standpoint, look, and just be watching the news, right? right. It's looking grim for this place. It's looking grim for America. All right? We're looking at economic turmoil. World War III is brewing. So what do you think is going to happen? All this is not a good thing, but it's good for us. Because this man's downfall is going to be our come up. That's, right. that's when we get exalted in the kingdom of heaven. Man. Back to Revelation 18. This is Revelation chapter 18, verse 3. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Right, so the other nations that get money off of America. It says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and unto Yahweh hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even... So speaking about when the elect get teamed up. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to the works and the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. Now, read Revelation 11 and 12. That was it on that. That was Revelation 18. I read it earlier, but I had to get back to it. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Alright, read that again. It says, and they, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So what is that speaking about? It's talking about the, the chariots, the so-called UFOs. How when Yahweh Shai comes back to bring destruction on Babylon, he's going to be beaming up the elect. And we might very well hear a voice from the chariot that says come up here or like come here. Right. You know, and it, it'll be here and it'll, it'll be in Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Right. That can happen. People are going to be so scared to hear the Lord's voice too. You might actually start hearing this. Aside from the, uh, the laser beams being shot down like real hearing loud booms and stuff. You might right. actually start hearing Hebrew coming out the sky. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. Because you know, Jake, they like their sound system and their cars. Right. And their chariots today. So you think the, uh, the most highest angelic forces don't have the power to have sound systems? Right. You got regular, you got niggas out here in Rolls Royces. You think the Lord ain't riding this style? Shit. Fully decked out. It says, and the same hour was there a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men, seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the 
to the power of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. So the second woe is past, and then the third woe cometh quickly. World War Three. So it's the third woe is war prophesied about in the Bible. Yes, indeed. Start off with the one in Isaiah, is that Isaiah 66? Unless you have one in Eden, maybe not. Let's see what it says. I got one on. Yeah, we did this. Psalm 68. That's a good chapter. Might as well start from the top. This is this is Psalms chapter 68, verse 1. That's to the chief musician, a psalm or song of David. It says, Let Yahweh arise, let his enemies be scattered, let them also that hate him flee before him. As a smoke is driven away, so drive them away as wax melted before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of Yahweh. The wicked shall perish at the presence of Yahweh. Which the wicked is Esau, man. Edom. And you can argue that it's also our people, because we have a lot of our people that are wicked. And they're going to die the same death, have the same fate as Esau. Which is a tragedy. But it is what it is. Says, but the but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before Yahweh. Ye, let them exceedingly joy rejoice. Sing unto Yahweh. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. Yah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widow is Yahweh in his holy habitation. Yahweh setteth the solitary in family. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. O Yahweh, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Salah, the earth shook the heavens also dropped at the presence of Yahweh. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of Yahweh, the power of Israel. Thou, O power, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. Uh, I got one. Jump down to verse 13. Let's get to that one. Psalm 68, 13. Though ye have leaned amongst the pots, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her fathers with yellow gold. So that's, that's speaking about the chariots. So when the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Solomon. The hill of Yahweh is as the hill of Bashan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan. That's it. Uh, I got it. What you got? Start at nine. This is Ezekiel 10 and 9. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims 
one wheel by one cherub and another wheel by another cherub. Ezekiel's wheel. It says, and the appearance of the wheel was as the color of a beryl stone. Remember, remember Jane Electronica did a song called Ezekiel's Wheel? Yeah. Which is ironic, I thought he was Muslim. What's he doing reading the scriptures? So he deal with the Quran? It shows you that you really gotta come to the Bible for everything. Right. All roads lead to the Bible. It's the foundation. It says, and as for their appearances, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. And that's talking about like that's giving you a description of what the UFOs would look like. A wheel inside of a wheel. Have that terminology of flying saucer, right? A ship, you know what I'm saying? And then we just read in um, Psalm 68, it's like described as like a soap. And like, even when you see like the videos that the military and um, the air force be releasing, like it just be like a like a shiny, like a shiny, like disc that's in the sky, and it's right. zooming, you can barely see it. It's just, you ever see how they be moving? Yeah, they be like cutting step back, and it's like it's like you can't like pockets movements yeah because how could something go forward and just stop on a dime and then go backwards side to side right there's no technology that could do that that's that's actually against physics <laughs> right that's really against physics you cannot be a, a mortal man in a regular body you know making those types of moves because that g-force will mess you up you'll, you'll, you'll pass out right. your brains will turn to mush exactly so that lets you know that when we get up in the, the chariots man our bodies are gonna have to be changed we're gonna have spiritual angelic bodies. So, uh, Ezekiel 10 11. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. And their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round of even round about even the wheels that they four had. So this is Ezekiel describing the chariot as best as you can. I could picture it. Like when you read the scriptures and you like try to envision it in your mind, I could see it. Because you gotta remember, Ezekiel, he walked the earth thousands of years ago before we even seen seen the technology that we have today. You know what I'm saying? With all this refined metal. You know what I'm saying? These big ass trucks. You know, right. these, you know these, these big uh, planes that we see today. Yeah, we didn't, you can see it. There was airplanes back in those days. Exactly. So what would what could it have been? Like what else could he liken it unto? You know what I'm saying? There wasn't there wasn't terminology or things like that back then. Right. He was just breaking it down the best way he could with what they had. Exactly. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of cherub, and the second face was the face of a man, and the third face of a lion, and the fourth face of an eagle. Uh, that's it on that. That's going into the angels, and they're like, you know, used it, giving like their description of how they looked. Got another one, Second Kings. This is Second Kings chapter two, verse eleven. It says, and it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Eli yeah, he was beamed up. You know, the Lord's will when Yahweh Shai comes back. To destroy this place we get beamed up like elijah got beamed up if you've seen any movies sci-fi movies and that deals with the ufos it shows you how there's like a beam this is how we think it could go we don't know for sure but there's like a beam of light that comes from the chariot and then it's like you levitate up into the chariot yeah because we ain't really seen no chariot like that yeah we ain't seen no chariot actually we just, we just see them, you know, in video flying around, but we never seen them in their full glory and what they're capable of. We ain't, we ain't seen them in action like that. 
leave enough people to shut down later videos. Remember that movie? It's called uh, Tom Cruise. I forget the name of it. And um, they had the, like the alien invasion. And they oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Shoot down know. lasers, man. So Hollywood, they be, they be getting the inspiration from the scriptures too. That movie, uh, Independence Day. That was it on that. Alright, we, uh, we can deviate from the topic of UFO, UFOs. You wanna bring something else on? So, talking about reincarnation, because I was oh, reading, yeah, yeah, a, I was speaking about that. Earlier. I was reading a little bit about that. Yeah. That's really a heavy thing, like, when you really get into it and understand it. If you want to speak about reincarnation, you got to read, um, what is it, Matthew 11 and 17? Let's start at 31. This is 1 Corinthians 14 and 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted this is the point says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets so whatever you were in your past lives in your next life you're going to be the same thing if you was a prophet in your past life in the next one you're going to be a prophet if you was a sodomite in your la past life you're going to come back as a sodomite in your next life and so on and so forth you come back in your lot you don't come you don't come back as an animal or nothing like that if you was wicked in your past life you come back as a roach that's not scriptural it's not biblical you got something matthew 17 and 11. get the context on it though <laughs> Start off at verse 10. Matthew 17 and 10. This is Matthew chapter. Sorry, this is Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, When then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. So Elias is. Greek or the Latin way of saying Elijah. Keep going. But I say unto you the, that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Yeah, because the Lord said Elijah came already. So he alluded to the fact that it's John. John the Baptist is Elijah. Keep going. The, and when they were come to that mult come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft, for oft times he falleth into the fire and off into the water. And I brought him to my disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Yahweh I answered and said, O faithfulness, O faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Alright, now jump to John 1 and 21. And after that, get Malachi chapter 4. John 1 and 21. Malachi what? 4. The last two verses. This is 
John chapter 1 verse 21 it says and they asked him what then art thou Elias and he said I am not art thou that prophet and he answered no so they asked the disciples asked him are you Elijah they asked John and he said no why did he say that because he didn't know that he was Elijah you won't have remembrance of former things. Right, I was just thinking of that. Continue. Yeah, no, hold up. You gotta bring, read that. Break it down. Get that scripture. There's no remembrance of former things. Read that. Read that. Read that one. Ecclesiastes 1 and 11 says there is no remembrance of former things neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after right so you don't remember who you was in your past life and could you imagine if you did that's <laughs> right I mean that can mess some people up you know and on the other side you know brothers that are teaching and that are in this church they might find out like, yo, I was Ezekiel. I know I'm good, I'm gonna make it. Yeah, that ain't proud. <laughs> like, yo, I'm Ezekiel. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta answer to me now. I'm King David, you can't tell me nothing. Exactly. Could you picture a scenario like that? All right. But we'll find out who's who in the kingdom though. All right. Now go back to what you was at before with John 1 and 21. I'll read it again. This is John 1 and 21. It says, and they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said, the prophet Esaias. Continue. Uh, the Lord? Not the Lord. Malachi. Malachi. It's all through the Bible and the Apocrypha. This is Mark chapter 1 verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judah and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel hairs, with, with camel hairs and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. So John used to eat locusts and wild honey. And um, the apostles, they said that uh, Abba Bivis, who we believe is uh, John and Elijah, who came back in our, in our present time, we ran, you know, back in what, the 60s and the 70s? Uh, we believe that he was Elijah and he was John. It really couldn't have been nobody else. And they said that he used to eat uh, locusts. They said, oh, Would you eat locusts? If I didn't have to, no. 
But technically, you can eat locusts. Yeah, it's not like it's unlawful. Yeah, it's clean. Jacob's trouble, if that's what the Lord gives me to eat, I'm going to eat it. But that's not my first choice. Continue. Uh, is there more? It's pretty much the print. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 Behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse right so that's speaking about the destruction before the how will destroys his place, he's going to raise up the prophets and gather up his men, his, his elect, his people, man. That great awakening. So that goes to show you, because it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So Elijah's here. We don't know who he is. He doesn't even know who he is, but he's here. No, Elijah is, is, is John, so... Like I just said, it had it had to be um it had to be Abba Bibbles. It had to be Abba. But he should have said the scripture. Yeah, but he's gonna like even when like the Shai comes back and beams him up, he's gonna be here. It's not this isn't talk this is talking about like in the um, what's the word I'm looking for? In the coming time, you know? Like he's gonna be here among us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the scriptures say that he's gonna raise up the dead. I died in Yahweh's shot. He's gonna, he's gonna be among us. Yeah. So I see what you're saying, bro. So even if you die in this tomb, or even if you live, you're gonna be gathered because you're the, you're of the elect. 144,000 in the one curse. I got something. Job 19 and 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see Yahweh, whom I shall whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another, though my reins be consumed with me. See, again, it's going into reincarnation. Yeah, and you'll even get hints of somebody, you know, being who um, others believe they are. You know what I'm saying? Their mannerisms and stuff like that. Yeah, Their like, speech. Like he read in um, John 1 and 21, 1 23. He said that he is, he is the voice you know, crying in the wilderness, just as Elijah. That's what it said. So, same thing we are. Uh, I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about uh, King Solomon and how King Solomon is Yahweh shot. Right, right. Because when you go into the scriptures, it says that King Solomon's kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. So, when you go into the history, he ruled for what? Only 40 years? 40 years. 40 years, right? So, how is that everlasting? That just means that the kingdom really put on a standstill so he's gonna have a chance to rule later on eventually and so that, that that's that's one of those hints that yeah yeah i would shy is king king um king solomon that's too deep but i mean christians ain't gonna get that yeah because there's no scripture where it really says that literally per se but it gives you that hint right like for example you see that there's two men over there, and you might you might do, do a head nod like, yeah, that dude over there, yeah, yeah, he's solid. So you'll be like, yo, it can't be anybody else, you know? It's gotta be, it's gotta be um, the, the one that he's alluding to that, that's gotta fit that certain criteria. Right. 
It's gotta be that one. Yeah, it's like that, that lot. This is Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 35. It says, For after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again, and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Again, reincarnation. It's all, it's all throughout the Bible, the Apocrypha, it's all throughout the scriptures. John chapter 1 verse 23 he said I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord as said the prophet Esaias and they which were sent were of the Pharisees and they asked him and said unto him why baptize thou then if thou be not the if thou be not that Yahawashai, nor Elias, neither that prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. So, so why did John say that? He, he quoted what Elijah said. He said, I am the voice crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Elijah. So, again, he's taking on those traits, giving you that hand, letting you know. That he was Elijah. He actually was Elijah in the reincarnation, but he didn't know. Right. It says John answered them, saying, "So again, to go back to my example that I gave earlier, you might have two, three dudes standing on the side, and then you might allude that uh, one of those men could, could be who we're speaking about, right? And you just be like, yeah. You might nod, you might hear. So you're like, man." Somebody's got to be that dude, you know what I'm saying? So that was the prophets. They were, you know, looking around for who that man was. And then they actually, Yahweh Shai, he actually came out and literally said it. He's like, yeah, John, he's Elijah. Uh, continue? Nah, that's the one. So with that, we're going to close. Another one.